Hello and happy new year. What was once meant to be a monthly series has unfortunately somewhat fallen by the wayside because I haven't made a video for three months in this series. That's not to say that I haven't been painting, although that is also mostly true. As has been a running theme this year, I didn't get very much painting done because whilst I am in charge of how much work I do because I am my own boss, I gave myself far too much work to do and it wasn't until December that I was able to get any real amount of hobbying done. I got a little bit done here and there in October and November but it wasn't enough to actually make a video. December was an outsized month for painting for another reason however because whilst it was obviously the Christmas holidays, I got Covid and was in self-isolation from everyone including Pixel Girl in the same house and had to do something so ended up doing a fair bit of painting and then when I thought I got over Covid I got a different variant and so I'm back in self-isolation which is why I am still currently ill and you can probably hear and see it. So rather than look at me let's have a look at some models and I'll tell you about how I painted them. First up, some looters for my Hawaiian Orc Force. So if you've seen some of my painting recaps previously, you may have seen two of these guys before, but I painted three up over the past couple of months. Uh, these take a little longer than your normal Orc Boys because I have to sculpt on a shirt. Well, I did on two of them. Actually, one of them doesn't have a shirt, and he was a bit unusual. He's the only knob or looter or kind of big guy in the army who doesn't have a shirt. But the reason he doesn't is because I wanted to have the little grot, or it's actually a knobla because it's a uh, Ogre Kingdom's kit, on his shoulder and I tr experimented with this guy trying to do some tattoos because I know I want to do this on the war boss but I wasn't terribly happy with how it came out so I need to go back to the drawing board a bit but you know as a model overall looks pretty good. This guy has a pretty typical kind of Hawaiian design that I tried to put in and I'm pretty happy with him but unfortunately he just sort of pales in comparison to the last knob who's technically the spanner. Um, he's obviously the leader because he's got his shirt untucked and therefore he's cooler than the others and whilst I was in isolation I may have just gone a little bit nuts and um, yeah did did this. Um, so for those of you who don't recognise it, this is the cover art from 40k's third edition of some Black Templars and I think it looks alright. Like uh, I think it could be better. I will say that the uh, trick to doing this was to use black ink rather than black paint. I've been a recent convert to using inks for certain things but basically it has a lot better flow off of the brush, it has a lot better pixel density so you don't need to do as many coats and um, it just meant that I was able to do the fine detail work. It's not amazing, I think if I was to actually dedicate loads of time to this, like several hours, um, I think it could be a lot better but considering I was in lockdown and just was obsessing over doing this one thing, I think it came out pretty well. Next, I'm just going to briefly showcase a couple of skeletons from Cursed City. I've shown you these before, but I've actually now based them. Uh, the I think I mentioned this before, but I was waiting for a uh, cobblestone roller from Green Stuff World to appear. Um, and I'm basically doing all of the bases from this box set like this, so they're all kind of unified. And um, I think they look really good, especially considering that they are um, quite predominantly red with blue as an accent color. And the cobblestones across all the bases are basically a very dark blue highlighted up to greys and then a little bit of white so this sort of colour theory consistency across them. In isolation however I took it upon myself to try and paint as much of the contents of the box as possible specifically looking at the creatures so I've already done all the skeletons but here you can see the rat swarms um, which were very easy to do. There's a, a fair bit of white um, as kind of like an extreme highlight in these which wasn't intentional that's actually millipup from when I made uh, the bases and I should probably do something about that and try and dissolve it but you know there we go they're just filthy rats. I love this pair of dueling skeletons uh, who look like they're having an incredibly petty argument for all of time. They actually look really good on camera, better than I expected, um, and I think this is because I painted them, um, and, and in fact pretty much all of the creature models, in the same way, which was to do a zenith or highlight, use contrast paints to um, just block in the colours, and then oil paint um, in the style that I've stolen from Ninjon I've spoken about in the past, um, to basically shade it. And I think across the skeletons in particular, uh, it's produced this really smooth, lovely gradient, which I've then you know picked up afterwards with with a few um, highlights and a very light dry brush. Um, but I think they just look really, really good. Um, surprisingly so, actually. This is the technique that I used across uh, pretty much all of these little markers. Um, and, you know, there's a variety of them here. Some of these were very quick jobs. Some of them I actually took a bit more time on. This little goblin fella, for example, I think I'm not actually sure what he is in terms of the game because I haven't played it yet. But um, I think he came out very, very well. I believe I actually use inks over a Zenithal highlight for him, which might explain why he looks uh, particularly good. Um, but again, I think he also works with the cobblestone. And uh, again, with this kind of group shot, you can see how unified they 
kind of all are. I'm really looking forward to playing the game. Um, I just need to end the bloody isolation and actually paint some heroes, which I want to do to like display competition quality. So that's a, a way off yet. I should mention that I also painted up the bats um, and I actually experimented with these. I mean, again, basically the same technique of uh, Zenithal contrast paints, oil paints, picking out highlights. On the bats though, I try to do something a bit more interesting in terms of the lighting and basically hit the backs of the models with uh, crimson ink through an airbrush. So it gives this uh, lovely kind of effect as if they're running away or, or flying away from a, a red light source. In my experience, I found that the ink works better for um, trying to replicate a light source like this than paint. I'm sure there's a color theory reason for that that I am too dumb to understand. Technically, I shouldn't have included them because they're not better but I mean they're painted. Come on, give me a give a guy a COVID a break. But all of these models are prelude because over the past several months I've been working on a really big project and it's the piece de resistance of my Hawaiian orcs. It's the Hawaiian orc surfers. And um, these have honestly taken several months, they've taken several lots of experimentation, and they are, in retrospect, by far the most complicated models I've ever put together. These are so complicated that I am definitely going to do a whole video, which will be out in a couple of days, hopefully, um, explaining how I did it step by step, because the the paint job is kind of its own thing, the boards are their own thing, and the bases, obviously, and the water effects are very much their own thing, and there's loads of different techniques going into it. Um, I'll show you some shots here, because I think, well, I want to show them off, basically. I think they look really good. Um, but um, in terms of how I did it, I'll leave that for a future video. You'll have to come back for that one, unfortunately. All I'll say for now is that I'm really happy with how the models came out. It's pretty much exactly what I had in my mind's eye, and I cannot wait for them to be shot off the board in turn one by a new hammerhead. I can't promise that this series will be monthly this year, but I would like it to be, and I hope that this year is going to be a bit different because I'm currently in the process of hiring somebody to work for me full time, helping me edit and actually free up some of my evenings, and so time to paint and time to make videos like this one. Fingers crossed you'll be seeing a lot more of me on this channel talking about painting this year, if nothing else because I am serious about trying to win a painting award this decade, and that's only going to happen if I actually get some practice in. So I would like to paint some models. I would like to make some videos. The only thing that's going to stop me is how much of the other work I actually have to do. <laughs> Thank you for watching this recap. There's some others on the screen right now if you'd like to watch some of the previous videos I've made about models I've painted. Fingers crossed I'll be back in a month looking and sounding a lot better and having some more models to show off. So thank you again for watching and happy new year.